The Lulberts, that's our word, brought to you by Spank Mag. And I'm here with Jeremy Heisenberger. I like yeah, maybe I should have maybe I should have spent some time thinking about a funny name for your last name <laughs> 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 instead of an advertisement. Um, and Jim Jesus here. How's it going, man? Oh, it's going. It's going. Yeah. Uh, any new updates on the legal front? Uh, no, I'm still. Uh, well, actually, I don't remember the last time you and I talked, but uh, I'm still still waiting. Another court date coming up uh, next week, actually. Woohoo! Um, and uh, then I'll hopefully. Finally, finally find out my trial date. We'll see. Yeah, so you could finally get out of New York, Stan. <laughs> yeah. Well, I'm still, I'm still working on that. That's, I'm, I mean, at the very least, I'm trying to work on the sale of my house, and I'm trying to coordinate that. Uh, I, I'm not sure when my court, when my trial date's going to be, when that's actually going to be over. But I'm trying to set it up that I sell my house by the end of January, so I may be in limbo for a little while. Ugh. But at least I'll have, at least I'll have one thing taken care of. Yeah. Probably have to live out of a momo until everything gets sorted out. <laughs> yeah, that's it was be a whole lot of fun. Yeah, because unfortunately, you know, my uh, my my kid my kid my kids and their mom have a place to go um, for the time being because there's they still have their apartment, but you know, I can't. Re- I'm not really allowed there. So <laughs> <laughs> me me and Murder Dog may have to travel around a little bit. We'll see. I don't yeah. know. Yep, yep, yep. Uh, so when this gets released, it'll be tomorrow, eleven uh, twenty. Yeah, you, are, you, are you are you sparking up? <laughs> yeah. Wait a minute. Is it today eleven twenty? I'm so confused. Yeah. No, it's eleven twenty one now, buddy. But uh, <laughs> but I'm gonna release this tomorrow, so it's gonna be uh, JFK's assassination anniversary thing. I don't know. Uh, and I've been getting kind of back into the whole like kind of digging into the because I did a podcast. Oh, what was it? Episode 25 or so? Yeah, because it was on the 25th. Yeah, it was the first one I did. Uh, and yep. I'm on, yeah, the next one's going to be 75. That's the third one. So the first one I did, I did a whole kind of like refutation of all of the conspiracy theories revolving around JFK, uh, except for one, except for the one that I used to believe in. And I can get into that <laughs> just a bit. Um, and uh, and kind of going through like all of the evidence that shows that Lee Harvey Oswald killed Kennedy and killed him alone. And I've just been kind of getting back into that whole thing a bit. And and the more I've been digging into it, the more I'm kind of like, I'm happy um, that the conspiracy theories exist. Now, I mentioned this to you at the very beginning. Like, I actually thought that conspiracy theories are a good thing, uh, even though I'm, I'm yeah. trying to debunk them now because it, it's it's already ran its course. But you were like, how the hell hell is that? <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm. I'm. I mean, I'm, like I said, I'm not opposed to it. But how do you? Why, why do you think they're a good thing? That's confusing to me. So back in the day, everybody kind of trusted the government. Uh, everybody really liked the government. Uh, no one really had any problems with the government. <laughs> and then it wasn't until JFK's assassination that people started questioning like major institutions within the government, like seriously questioning them. And they were starting to be OK with questioning things like, you know, the war, because back in the day, like if you question the war, like it was it was a big thing. It was bad. <laughs> like, well, yeah, they. I mean, they 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 essentially brought back the Alien and Sedition Acts. How, or not the Alien and Sedition Acts. The um, what's the one? The uh, where you couldn't talk crap about the about anything. Mm-hmm. Um, um, what like Adams one? He did it. I can't remember what it was. Anyway, but yeah, they brought it back for World War One. They locked up a bunch of people for speaking out against the war. I'm pretty sure they did it for World War Two as well. <laughs> so yeah, you can't. Uh, you weren't allowed to say anything. So nobody ever did. Yeah, and um. The, there was also kind of like groups that would go like groups of women that would go around and if they saw men walking around who were like war age uh who weren't um uh who weren't fighting or serving or in, in uniform or whatever uh they would put like a little i think they put like a little flower on their their thing and basically which was basically the white, yeah the the white flower brigade was yeah, that what it was called yeah, yeah basically calling them cowards uh for yes. not going off and dying in the war um I mean, it was that intense back then. <laughs> you could not question it. And it wasn't until the Vietnam War that there was like, uh, you know, people could actually speak out. And, and, the, and the reason why was a lot of this had to do with people starting to really be skeptical of, of the United States government, which people weren't that skeptical of until Kennedy was assassinated. And all these kind of conspiracies started coming out. Oh, it was it was the mob. Oh, they were working with the uh, CIA and the FBI was behind it. And. You know, and there's a lot of like interesting things around that. And I was I, I was kind of sitting there going like, sure, they're all wrong, 
but they did a good thing. <laughs> like uh, looking back, you know, hindsight's twenty twenty. Um, mm. Okay. Yeah, I could, I could see that. Yeah, and it, it really wasn't until then, um, until like you know, when it, I probably would say that all these JFK assassination conspiracy theories probably led to what we understand libertarianism today. Because back then it was just, oh, you know, you know, people like Carl Hess or whatever, you know, who just wanted limited government. But it wasn't until like the seventies that that you know, that all these people started coming around and starting the new libertarian movement and started talking about, do we even need a state? <laughs> uh, and a lot of those people had something to do, or at least maybe be influenced by like conspiracy theories, uh, like that. So I'm sitting there thinking, like, yeah, you know what? Maybe this is a good thing. Maybe the JFK assassination conspiracy theories, as much as I dislike them, uh, were were a good thing for for the day. Probably was a watershed moment, and I'm not even sure if I'm using that word right. <laughs> I'm not even sure either, but yeah. so essentially we're creating skepticism through bullshit. Yeah. Um, I like, okay, I could buy that. <laughs> <laughs> we're creating skeptics through bullshit. I yeah. Guess, actually. Um, yeah, that's I, okay. I, I can see that angle then. I, that, that, that makes sense. Um, I, cause I'm, I've always been, I mean, I, it, like most people, I went through my conspiracy, you know, my Alex Jones phase when I started and, I, I, you know, so I got a little crazy with that, but then I quickly moved away from it. But I, I can, I can see how that would at least spur people's thinking. And, uh, you know, I just, unfortunately too many people seem to take it to the extreme mm -hmm. and they, they go from, Oh my God, I think the government may have killed Kennedy to the government. Everything the government does is wrong <laughs> and it doesn't matter. And, it, and if you, if you disagree with me, then you must be some kind of shill. I mean, I don't know how many times I've been called a shill lately. That's a new one for me. I mean, I've been called every name in the book most of my <laughs> life, but the shill one's new for me. Yeah, I, so, I, I'm, I'm used to the shill one. <laughs> well, yeah, I know you and, and and a couple other of my friends who I'm used to seeing go like who, who I've seen go through this for a couple of years. But it has, but now it's starting to happen to me too, and I'm like, really? <laughs> Welcome to the club. The, we meet on who Wednesdays. Who am I shilling for? Yeah, who we, am I you shilling have to know for? the secret Masonic handshake though. <laughs> Constantly, constantly complaining how poor I am, how I have no money. I don't even have a job anymore officially. Like, come on, I'm shilling. I'm like, you know, I'm desperately trying to get out of my house with like you know, the minimal amount of money, with you know, with the most amount of money I can, which is not going to be much. Yeah. Who, you know, if I'm shilling, I'm doing a horrible job, <laughs> or at least I'm doing it for free, like an idiot. Yeah. Um. So yeah, JFK. Um. So you were involved in kind of you were a bit of the in the conspiracy kind of circuit for a while yeah what were you and jfk kind of was my first oh, okay well so jfk jfk was my first one although i never i don't think i got anywhere i didn't dig into it anywhere near as deep as you did okay um but I, that was the first one that kind of got me thinking and and questioning and you know watching you know watching what is it this is a pruda film um and just reading every like i actually think i have like at least two or three books uh on my on my bookshelf about you know the, who who really killed kennedy type stuff um, that people had bought me over the years, and uh, yeah, that was the first one. Yeah, and then, um, uh, you know what's interesting is that I didn't really look into JFK that much until after I become became a skeptic of conspiracy theory. It wasn't until after I became I got uh, so that was, and then even before then, like I remember because I was kind of hanging around a lot of the anti conspiracy theory kind of crowd. Uh, like conspiracy science, which I think they're the skeptic. What do they call it? The skeptic science now? I forget what they're called. Um, the site's pretty much kind of like almost like an archive at this point. Like no one participates with it anymore. Uh, but there was one guy that used to contribute a lot, and he used to do a lot of stuff about the JFK stuff because apparently that's where he kind of came in to the whole anti-conspiracy stuff was that he was a JFK conspiracy theorist. But the only thing that I ever did as far as JFK was just kind of believe Bill Cooper. <laughs> Bill Cooper wrote a book called Behold the Pale Horse. And in it, he was talking about how, like, all of these other conspiracy theories about second gunman on the grassy knoll and uh, JFK or Oswald being a, you know, a patsy or even working for the mob or whatever. All those are fake. And all you just really need is a really clear uh, version of the Zapruder film. And it shows that the, the limo driver turns around and pulls out a gun and shoots JFK in the head and hmm. you know crappy internet videos at the time you know there's only so good as you can get and and the low quality versions that you were getting on the internet back in those days it kind of looked like the, the the limo driver would turn around and a gun would appear 
and he would shoot him in the face and then drive off. Yeah. And it just turns out it's really just the passenger, the person in the passenger seat, the way his hair kind of reflected the sun. <laughs> That's all it was. Um, but I was absolutely convinced, like, oh, no, it was it was it was uh, it was the it was the the limo driver and he had a gas powered gun or something like that. I can't remember what it was <laughs> but that shot a pellet into his face and exploded. Um, <laughs> yeah. And I didn't cover. I don't think I covered that conspiracy theory in my podcast, though. <laughs> no, I <laughs> don't, because I think I, I. You know what? Like I said, I never dug that deeply into it, and I think I've only vaguely heard about that one. So I definitely, I'm pretty sure I would have remembered it if you had brought it up, because I, <laughs> I did listen to your episode on that. That I don't think you did. Yeah, I don't. I don't really know that story. <laughs> yeah, that, that one angle. was an interesting one. <laughs> that was a really interesting one. Um, and you'll. It's funny because you'll see people like. There's a lot of people in the JFK circuit that hate Bill Cooper because, like, he, he's spreading this disinfo. <laughs> you know, he's a shill for the government. He's spreading disinformation, um, which I didn't always he love. Get, didn't he later get murdered by his government? Yeah. Kind of hard. <laughs> it's kind of a tricky situation. So Bill Cooper, um, for years, had been like, and I remember seeing this on his website when he was still alive. Like he would post like things on on his website saying like, like warning. This is a this is a this is a this is a notice to all government agents. If any agent steps foot on my property, they will be shot immediately, and they are no longer allowed to interact with me when I'm in public, or else they'll be shot. And like just kind of putting all these kind of questionably threatening kind of co- posts out like all the time on the internet. And I remember uh-huh. reading them like, dude, this guy's gonna get killed one of these days. <laughs> and uh, like shortly at like two months after nine eleven happened. Uh, which, by the way, I remember after 9-11, he was very much like 9-11, you know, was actually caused by bin Laden and we need to go over there and bomb the crap out of him. This whole thing like he he knew was a conspiracy theory. That's a bunch of crap. Because um, I remember reading it going like, yeah, you know, <laughs> it was bin Laden. Um, yeah. So like he kept making all these threats and then like he was getting complaints from the neighbors because he was like he was messing with the neighbors and waving guns at them, I think, or something like that. Um, his wife had just recently left him because he was abusive and an alcoholic. And, um, he basically, they, the, 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 the police kind of posed as like kids throwing rocks or whatever. Um, and he came out with a gun and, and when he came out with a gun, they had them surround, he had them surrounded and he started, he started trying to shoot the police officers and they returned fire. Um, so it's it's not like you know the government was completely like in the clear they they weren't. <laughs> oh yeah, no, no, and, and I, I know, I know. He. That's yeah. I think I I I, I th- if I if I if I said murdered, I, then I misspoke because I yeah. did I did mean to say killed because <laughs> yeah. I you know he was killed by his government. It wasn't necessarily that they were completely wrong in killing yeah. him, but but yeah, no, that I thought I thought that's what the story was. But yeah, no, I know he was. Um, he was another one that I knew of, but didn't, you know, I came, I came into the game much later, so I didn't even, you know, he was long gone by the time I got into things. Yeah. Bill Cooper. So I knew of him. He was one of the more crazier kind of conspiracy theories back in the day. Like even the UFO people thought he was crazy. Um, yeah. Yeah. That's what, that's, that's, that's what I remember about him. But yeah, I I remember the basic story about how he got, you know, he got shot, but it did, it did seem that he was, uh, you know, he wasn't exact. He wasn't exactly innocent in all of it because he was definitely agitating. <laughs> yeah, a, a bunch of people. So, yeah. <laughs> yeah, pretty much everybody hated him. Um, I think there was even a, a feud between him and Alex Jones. It's oh yeah, he of- hated he hated Alex because Alex, you know, Alex. I mean, that's how Alex, at least what he claims that you know he was a big Bill Cooper fan, and then he started doing it, you know, shortly thereafter, mm-hmm. and then. Uh, Cooper claimed that he was crazy and he was just making stuff up. <laughs> and it was just like, <laughs> yeah. like, hi, Pot. This is the kettle. And, uh, <laughs> by the way, you're you're black as shit, motherfucker. Uh, <laughs> Truth. Yeah, so. the whole world is just a bunch of nuttery. Uh, I have a I have a video on my YouTube channel where this guy named Don Ecker, who was like a he's like a a radio pro, radio talk show like actual radio. Um, and he talks a lot about like UFO conspiracies. It's almost kind of like, what's that show? Um, oh, with Art Bell. God damn it. What's the name? <laughs> oh, Coast to Coast. Oh, Coast to Coast. Yeah. 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 So it's kind of like that kind of show. And he did like a whole show just basically talking about who Bill Cooper was, like all the crap that he used to pull. Like he would call up other conspiracy theorists drunk and you can hear them. And they have like, they have 
the voicemails that he would leave on people's answering machines. Like where he's drunk and like threatening to kill them. Like, ah, oh, I'm going to kill all you. Uh, just drunk as hell. And just <laughs> talking about how like his wife has left, left him because he was a, an abusive alcoholic. And, you know, the only thing he really cared about was regu- uh, <laughs> was was scotch. <laughs> Shevitz Regal, that was his sauce. And he would just go home. or He'd go to the bar, get drunk, tell everybody like, yeah, I don't care. It's all a bunch of bullshit, I don't, you know, but it sells. <laughs> they come home and beat his wife. <laughs> yeah. Wow. And I fell for it. <laughs> so wow. you can see how I'm a little bit jaded about conspiracy theorists. So <laughs> that's all right. I know a lot of people that that, that uh, fell for his and others. You know, like I said, I f- I've I fell for Jones's stuff for a while. Mm. You know, I was that stupid. <laughs> Yeah, although I actually, I, I, although actually, I ended up more. Sadly, I ended up more of a Glenn Beck person than an Alex Jones person, which I think it might have actually been worse for a while. Yeah, I don't know. He's yeah, not. He's actually know. better. He, he's actually better now, but he was pretty. He was pretty out there for a yeah. while. <laughs> uh, and that's that's and that's around the time Acorn that I found him. This is connected to this organization, which is connected to Marxists, which is they're all commies. Everything, everybody's a commie. Yeah, remember yes, that? yeah, the chalkboards. Yeah, that's. Yeah, exactly, and that that's the phase that I that I ended up uh, listening to him for a while because my dad my dad had always been a big fan of his, so I ended up listening to him for a while, and it was like, oh, he's got some pretty good ideas, and oh, this stuff sounds good, and then I, you know, within like six months, I was like, all right, this dude's insane, <laughs> and he's a big crybaby too. He cries an awful lot. Um, I'm, not, I'm not a I'm not a I'm not opposed to a male showing their uh, their sensitive side, you know. That's all. That's all well and good, but Jesus Christ, man, pull come it on. together. Yeah, come on. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I love the the picture that kind of goes around of him crying. <laughs> yeah, people still there's a, there's a lot of them. There's yeah, a lot yeah. of them because. Yeah. But there's kind of like a like a really artsy one. It looks like so, it almost looks like a drawing, but it's actually a photograph. Like a, <laughs> oh, nice. Yeah. yeah. So yeah, um, uh, speak, speaking of which, uh, there is a connection between JFK and Manson, who just died. Was it yesterday? He died yesterday, right? Oh, the, no, no, uh, no, 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 no. Charlie, Sunday. Sunday night, yeah. He died Sunday night. Yeah, the 20th. So, so the, a lot of the stuff that I've been reading as far as JFK goes uh, comes from a book called Reclaiming History, um, which uh, was actually by a prosecutor who did like a mock trial in London, he, it was kind of interesting, though. It's an act, you can actually go on on YouTube and find the the whole trial and watch the whole the whole trial. Um, they had uh, they went to Dallas and they found the original witnesses, the original Oswald, uh, the Warren Commission witnesses. They have got all of them, um, and they got they te- wait. But you, the, the, you mean they hadn't all mysteriously died, like supposedly <laughs> happened in every one of these conspiracy <laughs> theories that they all end up mysteriously dying within like a 10-year a period? Oh, these people are dying. Yeah. It's like, dude, they were they were 80 <laughs> when it happened. What do you expect? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> but it was like, what, 20 years later, 23 years later. Um, yeah, that's what so I'm it saying. Was like the, it was in the 80s, so there was a lot of them still alive. Yeah, they've they, they found it. That's what I'm saying. They actually did find these people. Yeah, but that's yeah. always what, that's always what goes around. Every time one of these conspiracy theories comes up, that's what I usually start hearing is people are mysteriously dying surrounding it. Yeah. So. Except no one killed Jack Ruby. You know, they let him they let him rot in jail for a couple of months before they mysteriously killed him with was it stomach cancer or something? Or no? You know, oh no, yeah, that was a pruder. A pruder died of uh, stomach cancer. Oh. <laughs> but we already have his his eyewitness. Uh, we we see it. We can watch it. Um, anyways, yeah. So they got like all the. They even tagged people from the Dallas jury pool and actually had like real jury kind of. And they went through and picked, do, did actual jury selection, and their whole thing was like, if you do this, we'll give you all the trip. All expenses paid to London. So everybody was like, hell yeah, I'll do it. Because none of these people even wanted to talk to the press anymore. But for a free trip to London, hell yeah, I'll talk to the press. <laughs> so they did like yeah. this, this trial. It wasn't scripted. And the, the so the, the, um, the was it the, 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 the defense, the guy who, uh, who was going to defend Oswald is actually Gary Spence. I don't know if you know who that guy is. I know the name, but I don't remember the yeah. story. He's, uh, he's like a lawyer and he wears like a cowboy hat. And he's he's known for like never losing a case ever. Like he's never okay. lost a, every every time he's defended somebody, they've they've gotten off. And um and and the 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 other the the prosecution was was um a guy named uh, Vincent Bugliosi, 
uh, Gia Silent, apparently. Uh, and, and he was also the same prosecutor in the Manson trial. <laughs> That's how he got famous. Was oh. he was the one that, he's the one that got Manson thrown in jail uh, for the Tate murderers, I think. Yeah. So, yeah. And he, you know, Manson's died. So every, everything's connected, man. <laughs> and it all goes back to Acorn, I'm telling you. I'm sure, Illuminati confirmed. Yeah, let me show you on my chalkboard. <laughs> <laughs> Why doesn't anybody believe me? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> <laughs> so, yeah, rotten hell, Manson. <laughs> oh, Charlie, yeah. fucking, Charlie. Fucking cult leaders, goddamn it. Uh, yeah, listen, I, I have I, I I have a similar disdain for cult leaders as you do. <laughs> the whole, my 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 whole issue with Manson is just that for the longest time I've just always been so like, yeah, was he a screwed up dude? Absolutely, but the fact that he sat in jail for all that time and uh, you know the tax cattle had to pay for it. Um, but no politician sits in sits in jail for essentially doing the same thing. Yeah. <laughs> Order, ordering people to commit murder and they go and do it. <laughs> yeah. And, you know. the, and, they, and they still run a cult that brainwashes people even but, yeah. but at an early age with drugs. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> and mandatory schooling. And then so they go and tell you, like, hey, if you if you wanna if you wanna make it far in life. Grab a gun, get in boot camp, and we'll pay for your school. Oh, you, and go kill these people, of course. Yeah, there's that too. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> he was so, competition. You know. That that was the problem with Manson to the government. There yeah. you go. That's, <laughs> was, that's that why he had to be. He had to be locked away. No, no, no. You can't be stealing our cult. <laughs> we need. We need our cult. We need cannon fodder. Damn it. Yep. Especially when did that when did that happen? When was that? Was that the mid seventies when that happened? Yeah, or was it earlier. It, no, it was it was nineteen seventy. Seventy, okay. Yeah, because what happened was he thought that Helter Skelter was uh, the song that was uh, the Beatles song. Uh, he thought that it had secret messages in it that was talking about how there was an upcoming uh, race war that was coming in the summer of sixty nine. And <laughs> and what was going to happen was all these all these black people were going to go from Watts all the way up to to uh, Beverly Hills and then start you know killing people and writing helter skelter on the wall with blood. And by the time the you know the, the nineteen sixty nine had ended like and nothing happened, he actually had to like start getting his people to go like okay let's let's it's time to show the darkies how to do it. That's that was <laughs> that, that, that those were his words. We need to show darky how to do this. Um, he wanted he wanted to start a race war. Race war, Bill. <laughs> yeah. Oh, Bill? Race war. I'll be sergeant. You be captain. <laughs> Except <the> IRL. <laughs> oh man. Yeah. Yeah, um, but I'm, I'm mad at him because he killed a, a really good genre of music. And granted, we got metal out of it with the death of uh, psychedelic rock. We got metal, but I don't know. Psychedelic rock was still great. Yeah, it was. Although, yeah, it's kind of hard to, you know, because I, I, I do enjoy me some metal, so it's kind of hard to say that, I, you know, yeah. I'm that mad. <laughs> well, it's, it's, it's experiencing a revival, so that's good. Yeah. Yeah. So, yeah. Um, so how's your buddy doing? Is he is he getting better? I heard he was a little sick. Who? The one who's sick in the head? Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> Should we talk about that? <laughs> This is the proper venue. Oh, you know, it's fun. <laughs> I, I, I mean, I don't, I don't, I don't mind talking about it. It's just funny. I was actually talking to, I was talking to a, to another friend last night, and uh, I he asked me a question about my said fr- my my friend, <laughs> and I said that, uh, you know, I started, you know, he's like, he's like, well, I don't, he's like, I don't want you, to, you know, he's like, I feel bad pressing you. I'm like, well, actually, now that I think about it, I just recently recorded two shows with uh, friends of mine, and I think both of them I ended up bashing the hell out of Dave. Um, at the end of the show, just because <laughs> I couldn't help it, because he drives me up a wall, mm-hmm. um, you know, like he drives so many people up the wall. Although I'm trying, I'm trying to be somewhat nice to him right now because he's going to help me with uh, my mining rig that I'm trying to set up. So <laughs> I need to, need to stay on his good side for at least a little while longer. I wish the guy no will ill, but uh, ill will. Uh, but I, I, you know, I just he was just driving me up the wall with every time I hopped on Facebook. It was just. That dumb argument over and over and over. New post, new post, new post. And I was just like, I got to I gotta unfriend this dude <laughs> to be too much. But it's weird because you listen to, you, like, I'll listen to your show and it's a great show and he never talks about any of that stuff. But it seems like that's all he talks about on Facebook. 
all day is this really backwards kind of philosophy thing uh, that I'm bearing the lead on. Do you want? Do you want to tell? It? <laughs> <laughs> do you want to unbury this? <laughs> sure. Well, uh, first, yeah, you first probably of all, heard well, it did... more and longer than I have. So, yeah. Well, yeah. You, did, you did. You did. You did. You did mention my show. So yeah, we're talking about my co-host Dave. Uh, painter <laughs> who I, I love the guy. I mean, I've been, I've been friends with him for like four plus years at this point. Um, and, uh, you know, overall, he and I get along really well and we have a lot of, uh, we have a lot of stuff and ideas in, in common. Uh, but he, like so many others hopped on the whole, uh, you know, he's a hardcore ANCAP who stopped at ANCAP and believes there's nothing else possible, which is where he and I started to drift apart because I reached that point too and then started to go, hey, wait a minute. We're supposed to be the logical ones, right? You're telling me we now have an absolute here? Yeah. That doesn't seem right. We can't be that fucking smart. I'm sorry. I'm like, I'm, like, I'm, I'm, I'm not, you know, I'm not opposed to toot my own horn. Uh, I do it plenty. I'm like, but I know I ain't that smart. We haven't figured this shit out yet, fellas. Yeah. So, um, but he got stuck there. So he, like so many others, uh, fell onto that, uh, you know, they get into the, the border terrian camp, I guess. Uh, you know, although he he claims in private conversations with him, and I've said this before, so I, I, I'm, I feel I have no problem saying it publicly again. Um, in private conversations, because I've pulled this out of him in other in episodes every once in a while, um, he's said that he doesn't necessarily believe all this stuff. This is just where, you know, things are, where it seems to be headed for him. But he's still open and he's still ask, asking questions. Uh, and he, so he's not, you know, he's not, he's not, he does, he hasn't said an absolute in his mind yet. But then when you go on Facebook and read his posts, like the ones you're talking about, that's all you see is that just this very definitive position that this is the only way. And everybody, you know, basically anybody who doesn't agree with the, with the way thing, I, way I look at things as a comedy. Oh, wait, because, wait, wait, wait. Are you, are you talking about the board? I was more, I was just talking about how he thinks the tool is the greatest band in the world. I don't know what you're talking about. <laughs> oh, you're such an ass. Yeah, I'm, I'm, um, no, go ahead. I'm, I'm sorry. I know. I know. <laughs> no, by the way, Tool is an awesome band. It's just not the best band. Like, <laughs> no, I've, had, okay. I've had this. I've had this same argument with him too. I, I like Tool. I like Tool. But I, I, I love not Tool. Believe. I just don't think they're the best band. <laughs> I, yeah, I'd I buy more of their stuff on vinyl if it didn't sound like crap. I'm sorry. Their their vinyl releases sound terrible. They're mastered so bad. Oh, sorry. Go ahead. Go ahead. Carry on. Sorry to interrupt. I just wanted to make sure I interrupted. Interrupted. Yes. Yeah. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, so yeah. So he. Uh, so he's just one of those. He's just one of those people, and he's very, you know, like I said, if you read his posts, you you see this just like you know, like you said, it's just it's constant, and so, but it's just so weird because on the other hand, he also claims to be, and I've known him to be a, a pretty hardcore internet troll um, for years as Which well. Which I can respect. Yeah, which so like if I thought he was just trolling, I'd be able to just brush it off even easier. But it's the fact that I know that he's really starting to believe all this stuff that I, I have to give him pushback. And you're right. It doesn't come up on our show anymore <laughs> because it, it the dead. last time um, we started to have a conversation about it a couple of months back and it was relatively peaceful. But after the show, we got into uh, he and I got into it, and uh, we ended up like we that ended up becoming a Patreon episode, and like it was it it was a lot of it was me just like screaming, Dave, 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 shut the fuck up, you're not listening, holy shit, like just <laughs> over and over and over again, because every time I would present my argument, he would start rattling off in the way he does on Facebook with non sequiturs and just like you know just moving goalposts like i don't know how the motherfucker is that strong he moves so many goddamn goalposts i mean it's <laughs> insane um and just the you know soccer just goalposts are pretty heavy and and yeah ex exactly man yeah. and uh football goalposts are even worse um hockey would be a lot yeah. easier because you're on the ice you just got to knock it off those little slide them slide them around slide, yeah. yeah but he uh yeah he just <laughs> it's it's insane to, to watch him do it and it's infuriating and that's why i've just largely stopped engaging with him like i was i was giving him pushback because a lot of people weren't anymore because, well, most people had either blocked him or unfriended him like you did. Um, but mine, you know, wasn't, mine wasn't like I wasn't angry when I did it. I was just like, I just don't no, you were see, done. I just didn't want to see this in my feed every single time I hopped on the Internet. I was like, I'll just unfriend him. 
when he gives this up or if he turns hardcore, I'll think about like adding him. Or just, yeah, but just you, flat, flat out blocking him if he goes straight. If he goes like Jared or Jared who? Chairman. No. Chairman how? No, who? Yeah. Who? Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Chairman who? Chairman who? That's, that's every better. time I see pe- people post about him, I'm like, who? Yeah. Because oh. really, who is he? <laughs> like nobody. Yeah. He's just he's, riding the coattails of Cantwell. So. Sadly, he, may, he actually had made a name for himself before that. Um, and he was in, he was actually in that that mother that, that mofo was in a, is was was on a good track until all this happened. But it happened to so many of them. They just they got slammed with this. They bought the fear porn, of, <laughs> you know, of of the Alex Jones, you know, the the immigrants and the, you know my jobs and all that bullshit, and uh, and it just sucked. The, I like I and and they've just warped Hop's uh, Hoppa's message. Um, to fit their their particular needs, and they're justifying it. And all the while, most of them are all claiming, you know, that you know, mocking anybody who calls them a racist because they're like, "Of course we're not racist. We're just we're just using statistics, and we're just using this." It's like, dude, no, you've taken it to a whole another level. <laughs> yeah, some of the shit I see from 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 who, um, <laughs> from from him has always been like, like uh, like he'd be like, "Oh, Western society, it's all been white, and that's why we need to have a white culture and everything." And it's like libertarianism was always ran and started by and created by Jews. What are you talking about? No, they, they stole it. They stole it from the white. <laughs> like, yeah, yeah, definitely just, not anti-Semitic. No, nope, not at all. Yeah. Um, you know, just justifications <laughs> for everything. Now, Hoppe you know, echoed it. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Not racist. Now, now, <laughs> not now, 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 Dave, Dave, does, Dave doesn't no, normally Dave, go as far down that path no, as the no, rest I, of them do. I, I was going to say he does yeah, yeah. use he does he does use the echo thing though, which is just annoys the crap out of me. I just think that's so in like the fact that any of them picked up on this and, and continue using it. It's just so ridiculous. I like, like I like echoing ironically. Like anytime, well, yes. anytime I hear like a libertarian talk about like, oh yeah, we need to get back to Rothbard. I'm like. And 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 I know that they're one of those people that put echoes on people's names. I'll be like, you mean Echo Molyneux <laughs> or Echo Rothbard? And then yeah. the, it just it just stop, makes them go like, oh yeah, that's right. I forgot. Like my ideas were kind of based off Jewish ideas, which which is fine. Like, I don't care. But if you care, you should at least be consistent in your caring. <laughs> Not go like, oh, well, those Jews were fine. It's just all the other Jewish ideas are terrible. No, 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 no. <laughs> well, then it's not the Jews is... that's the problem then, is it? <laughs> like, if it's well, the Jews that's the problem, then it's also libertarianism. You, you can't have both. <laughs> Pick one. Well, yeah. Unfor- unfor- well, which ironically, of course, is one of their favorite games to play with other people, the whole pick one game. Yeah. Uh, <laughs> but consistency isn't really their bag. No. I mean, if, no. if, if it was, they wouldn't, be in the, they wouldn't be holding the positions they currently do. <laughs> Well, you have to be consistent. They can they can subside consistency for pragmat and pragmaticism because that's their okay. out. That's their out. Like, well, it's just it's just pragmatic. Okay, well then it's pragmatic for me to be a nihilist. Next, oh, exactly. <laughs> like if that's if that's your easy way out, then fine, whatever. And I'm not a nihilist, at least not anymore. I, I used to be when I started this podcast, but I'm not anymore. But apparently, I'm a nihilist again. Oh, I'm a, I'm a, I'm a nihilist. I'm a commie. I'm, you know, I'm pretty much everything because I don't agree with them. But that's, that's another thing that just to me is just, is, is, of course, is terribly ironic is that they, uh, you know, they, they say these things, but that, you know, the whole consistency of these things and yeah, pra- pragmatism is great for them, but it's like, wait a minute, weren't you the same folks that last year were mocking the, the people you call statists for making pragmatic decisions and not moral ones? <laughs> I'm confused here. Like, I'm pretty sure you were the guy that, <laughs> you know, like, but they just, they don't see it. And that's why, you know, I, I don't spend a lot of time on social media anymore. I mean, I still lurk a decent amount, but I don't really, you know, other than posting content and occasionally, um, you know, entering into some conversations here and there, usually trying to be in, enter into more fun ones. Cause it just, I get so frustrated with anything that's going to turn into a, well, what, what some people would call a debate, what I would just look at as a you know hot pile of garbage, um, <laughs> I just have I have no desire to be involved in that. But whenever I do post, 
a, a lot of them seem to drift towards the fact that you know it, it's something I just see every time I look out there. No matter what the argument is, no matter what the 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 difference of opinion is within this community, it's just more and more all I'm seeing is that same mindset that these same people that I used to know and respect were all. Um, pointing out that the uh, that the statist were doing just like a year ago, like I said, you know, like the the being inconsistent and and doing all these things. It's like it's the same mindset. You guys haven't left. You you're still stuck in that whole left right mindset where it's black and white. It's got to be you know there is and it's not logical <laughs> at all. You 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 claim to be all about logic and you claim to you that's how you got to these positions but you've completely abandoned it now because now now you've all of a sudden decided that there's only one one and only one answer and that you know that it's okay to push aside this uh all the principles of this philosophy that you claim to uphold in order to get what you want but somehow still not be the thing that every every all the things that people are claiming that you to be even though it's you know like the race you know racist anti-semitic like all these things it's like well, it's it's kind of hard not to think that you are like look what the thing look at what yeah. you say look what you defend it's not <laughs> uh, it's fr like I said it's frustrating especially for me especially with Dave because yeah. you know like I've I, known I, the guy I love the guy I work with the guy <laughs> yeah I have no problem with someone just going to be like a, like a racist who just like, oh I, I just don't like black people but doesn't want to do anything about it just wants to be privately racist I'm just like yeah whatever I'm just not going to hang out with that guy whatever because I don't want to kind of hear that crap. But for someone to constantly push for like political narratives under under that premise, that's what I'm like. Uh -uh. <laughs> I'm drawing the line here because that's where you start leading down this ugly road. And I've I've seen them say things like segregation is better than forced integration, and I'm sitting there going like, look, there's problems with forced integration. I will I will contend with you with that. But you can't look at what happened during the '60s and say. All that, all that civil rights act stuff, all the rioting and, and and all the all the things that were happening regarding segregation in the United States was not a product of segregation. Like segregation caused the outrage, <laughs> like that caused all these problems. You can't say that like, well, it was better back then. No, it wasn't because it led to that problem and to begin with, what ended up leading to forced integration. So. If you're for segregation, you're it's you you have to realize it in in by consequences you're also going to be for forced integration because that's what it's going to lead to. So, yeah, yeah, you know. <laughs> well, I mean, I I, I agree because I mean, I you know the, the same thing with extending it to you know what a, a lot of these guys talk about what they, they want their future society to be. Yeah. You know, they're, they're sure, you know, they're, they're fine with their covenant communities and I'm fine with them having them. Yeah. Get but I don't think me. they write, I, you know, <laughs> but it's unfortunately, and it always, it always, it always ends up coming back to the whole issue of, uh, of, you know, of land. And, and, and the, that's why, it, that's why it's the stupid border, this border thing where they, you know, I call it the, the board. Well, I mean, I call I call the border Tarians, but spell it you know spell it Aryan, uh, because most of them really are um, clever. And I try I try not to engage with them for you know like I said largely, but the, so, you know since it keeps encroaching on my world, I mean both of my co-hosts on the Seeds of Liberty actually <laughs> lean that way. Um, we just don't you know we don't talk about it much because uh, we've we we already have enough problems with. Uh, uh, being able to schedule guests because, well, a lot of people don't want to talk to Dave anymore. Mm -hmm. um, and on the flip, on the on the flip side, uh, a lot of his friends, a lot of a lot of the, you know both of their friends actually, him and Andre, a lot of their friends don't like me at all. They've all blocked. They've all they've all blocked me um, because I'm a horrible degenerate commie uh, nihilist. <laughs> um, because I don't, you know, I no longer seek hail to their and you know their 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 rigid view warped view of Ancapistan. Yeah. Uh, listen, like Andre, Andre's an interesting person because it does, because when I listen to him, he doesn't sound like anybody who would lean alt right, but it sounds, but he did like he was a Nazi. But he, he's was, not he, he was an actual, he was, a, yeah, yeah, he was an actual neo-Nazi, like yeah. a legit, like not like the rest of these idiots, but you know, going around LARPing to be one. No, this point, <laughs> Andre, Andre, Andre was a legit neo-Nazi. He's also a former, former army. Um, he's led a very interesting life and he's not, you know, he's only, he's, I don't even think he's 30 yet. I think he's like 28. Mm -hmm. Um, so in a very short time span, he's better, led a very interesting life. And then he became, uh, he actually threw our show, my show, actually the seeds of Liberty. He actually found us because of an episode we did with my, uh, with my buddy, Donnie Gebert, 
who uh, who's an anarchist who also spent he was 19 I think he had 19 years total in the military um, and then the last couple of years finally figured it out um, and then stayed in only to uh, pretty much be subversive and try to plant seeds of uh, anarchy and as many soldiers as he could before he got the hell out of there. <laughs> mm. I bet he read um, that that terrible, horrible book that allegedly Ben Stone wrote. Allegedly, you know what? I actually don't book. know. I, I I don't know if he actually read that, but this was this was long before Ben came out with that book, oh, um, okay. or 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 allegedly came out with that book. Um, yeah, this was this was this was this was this was at the very beginning of the Seeds of Liberty. So yeah, a couple, like a year or so before Ben put that book out. Um, but yeah, he he Andre happened to listen, just happened to find that show and listen to it, uh, and listening to Donnie and like our conversation with Donnie and Donnie talking about you know what changed for him and what he realized. All of a sudden, it just like clicked for Andre, and like he became an anarchist after that. Um, and he's, you know, he's, uh, he's, he's a very rigid, uh, Rothbardian, uh, and cap, I guess. And he just happens, you know, he's a big fan of Hoppe or at least what he perceives to be Hoppe because he, <laughs> he, he, he follows down the path with the rest of them. He's a huge fan of, he's a, he, he's the, he's a huge fan of, uh, who's and, uh, who? chairman who, yeah, chairman who, <laughs> chairman who, um, who? <laughs> oh, um, and, uh, before I forget. Alexa. Uh, so we, uh, he, yeah, he, uh, <laughs> Andre, you know, he, he's a smart dude. And now he's actually, we did the, one of the episodes we did recently was with, uh, with Randy England from the fiends. And cause La Andre's in law school now. So like, he's taking this whole thing from neo-Nazi to army guy to, uh, to now liber to libertarian now going, now going to try to become a lawyer. Um, but he, he he leans that way too. He just again doesn't talk about it like that on the show unless it gets. If I bring it up, he'll start talking about it. But I try to avoid it. Um, but if you follow him on Facebook, same thing. He's not as annoying as Dave <laughs> with his posting, <laughs> but he makes a lot of those same references in his in his stuff, and you know. Yeah. Well, speaking of Nazis, I think we should take a quick advertiser break. Hey everybody, Jim Jesus here. Do you still look at porn mags? Or are you one of those people that are tired of having to cipher through all of the cuckold videos on you porn? Get back to magazines 90 style and say big on all of your favorite porn magazine subscriptions. You need to head over to spankmag.com. For 50 bucks a month, you can have access to all of your favorite titles, including Aryan Milfs, Alt White, Segregated Clubs, Hentai waifus, or if your friends aren't around and you can explore more, let's say, exotic titles, you can check out something like Miscegenation Nation. But don't worry, there's also a panic button that will instantly bring up a Richard Spencer video just in case your Klansman roommate forgets to knock. And if you use my promo code JIM, you'll get a free life rune cum rag, a fitting burial for your white cream genocide. Spankmag.com slash Jim. Let's get back to the show. Okay, welcome back. So anyways... Um Enough of the Nazi stuff. What, what were you saying? <laughs> yeah. Enough of the Nazis. Let's talk about my friends, the Nazis. Yeah. Um, they, <laughs> so, yeah, no, no, just overall, like I said, man, it's just, it's it's interesting to continue to work with the two of them because I, I like them genuinely. Um, the rest of the, the rest of these folks, uh, any of my was friends with at one point, I'm, I'm no longer, I'm, you know, like I said, for the most part, most of them have blocked me. Um Although one thing that just popped into my head that does make me laugh every time I, I, I think about it was um, speaking of uh, who, uh, who he, he actually he who, who actually who actually still tries to engage me because um, he's still to this point. He's still never blocked me somehow, despite how he's, you know, his his. Uh, uh, what should I call it? I can't think of the word I was looking for, but anyway, his his, his penchant for uh, for blocking people on a dime. Uh, but he 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 likes to go to Dave's post every once in a while and try to engage me. And I've figured out where most people have either blocked him because they don't want to you know they don't want to deal with him. I'm like I figured out that if I just don't block him and just ignore his comments and continuing to continue addressing the person above him, it dri I found out it drives him even more insane. <laughs> So that's what I've started doing. But he actually came there, and, th and and this goes back to what we were talking about with like their lack of consistency and everything, and how their how this view has literally warped their entire thinking because they've just they've completely departed from logic because they they miss these glaring, um, like these glaring hypocrisies or, or contradictions or whatever it is that they're falling into. Um, he actually tried to attack me. Uh, because I made a comment about the fact, you know, after it was after, I think it was after you, you, you posted that you unfriended him. 
<laughs> I went to one of his posts and it was like they or no, that's what it was. It was he was last dust up with Larkin where Larkin Rose finally blocked him. Yeah. <laughs> blocked Dave. Um I, I went I there saw and I was this like post. Yeah, I think. Yeah, and I was like, Dave, I was like, I was like, this is what I meant by, you know, hurting the SOL brand, man. You're like, nobody wants to talk to us anymore. So who came to the post and tried to <laughs> tried to try to attack me by saying the only thing that ever hurt the SOL brand was you uh, pulling a knife on a defense on a defenseless woman based on a defenseless <laughs> woman for asking you a for asking you a question and and then he went into his nihil you know and then went into call you know your nihilism or whatever else might be a close second I'm like I'm like wait a minute wait a minute wait a minute already and I wanted to respond but I so but I I cont contained myself and I'm like no 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 keep this up just keep keep ignoring him and I kept responding to Dave like he wasn't even there like I didn't see him um that, but, I think but at I that wanted, point he was just trolling you <laughs> he was trying oh, to get you to say something oh, oh, he, he totally was <laughs> yeah. but what I wanted to say to him was wait a minute so so the guy who is out there preaching that he hypothetically has a claim to some hypothetical land because some, some and that he can keep other hypothetical people from crossing a border all in the name of property rights is attacking the guy who actually in real life had to defend his own fucking property against actual trespassers. <laughs> And you're calling that a bad thing, and you don't like. I just, I just, I, even when I pointed it out to Dave, even Dave shut up. Dave was like, "Oh," because it was like I think it, even that finally clicked with him a little bit. It was like, dude, really, this is where your arguments are going. This is how badly you guys, like you, like this. You're you're now. You're, it was bad enough when they started attacking agorists. Um, when I was like, wait a minute, aren't we supposed to be like? This, you know, this community in general, aren't we supposed to be against taxation? Aren't we supposed to be, you know, looking for ways to avoid it? But now the agorists are the problem. I'm like, but, and so now it's people that actually defend their property are the problem. We can only defend hypothetical property, apparently. Um, because that's their whole thing. That's everything's based on this theory that is not attached to reality. No matter how many times I've tried to point this out to them, they refuse to listen to me. It's not attached to reality. You're leaving out big parts of reality. Yeah. Which ironically is the same thing they say about communism. Yeah. And I think what's great on paper. Yeah. <laughs> a lot of this stuff really has people the people have their own kind of self their preferences, which is fine. They can have their preferences. Um but they also still want to hold these inconsistent principles that they hold a little bit more dearly. But they also don't like the fact that there's all these immigrations coming in because, you know, fear, 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 fear. There's fear, 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 porn everywhere. And so they try to rationalize backwards. Like they, they start at their conclusion and then try to think of rationalizations for it. And I started noticing this with Chase Racels because Chase Racels did the same thing with his kind of argument for for borders which was, really wasn't an argument for borders it was just saying like hey we have all this infrastructure that the state owns um and you know you can tell that his goal was wanting to restrict immigration for various reasons whatever it is i don't know he's he's not being very upfront with his with his preferences um but he doesn't he doesn't want immigrants coming on there so what he does is he says okay well how do how do i think of a way to try to keep them out but still kind of abide by these principles that i hold Year that I get from first principles, you know, the non-aggression principle, um, you know, praxeology, all these stuff. And so what he does is he goes, okay, well, you know, let's start working backwards. Like what, 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 what can we restrict them from? Okay. So we can restrict them from public lands. If the public lands are held in this public trust that are owned by people who were, you know, hurt by the state, uh, you know, are taxed by the state and it would be division, it would be divisioned out by the, you know, but how much threatening stuff they've got received from the state, how much abuse they received from the state and how much they paid into taxation. But the problem is, is like, you don't think of it forward. You don't go like, okay, that was a good rationalization backwards. Let's test it forwards and see if all, let's see, let's see what some problems could be from this. And one of the problems would be, well, all the immigrants would probably still have a claim to that land because they were hurt through NAFTA or they were hurt through a war, uh, especially if they were uh, a Syrian immigrant, they were definitely harmed by the United States or, you know, Iraq or Afghanistan. All these people would probably have a bigger claim to the public lands than I would. <laughs> Like, what the fuck? It does. It doesn't make any sense. 
No. Yeah. It, it doesn't. Because <laughs> they don't think that's... of they they think of it backwards, which is fine. If that's what you want, if you want to try to come to a conclusion, it's fine. But at least try to see if it works the other way. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, yeah. It's they're they're sci- they're they're sciencing backwards, which is <laughs> which which is funny because it because. Because ever as like I started paying attention to this, it was something you actually said when you were on my show. <laughs> oh. When when you made when you made a reference to Dave, we we I can't even remember what we were talking about. Probably but vaccines you said, or GMOs. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It was the, it was a GMO. I think it was the GMOs. And you actually you actually said to him, "No, dude, you're you're doing science backwards. <laughs> Stop." <laughs> And ever since then, I started to, I started to think more about it, and I was like, "Well, wait a minute. Yeah, it, it works. It does work the same in philosophy, and that's what they're doing." I'm like, yeah. "Everything's backwards. No, <laughs> stop it. Yeah. Stop it." And it's yeah, it's just it's so frustrating because, like I said, you know, when it comes to people like Dave and Andre, you know, especially Dave, I've, you know, been good friends with the guys for four years. Um, so I, I do have you know, there there I I do have affection for the guy. You know, it's kind of like. It's kind of hard to just brush them all together. Some of the other ones, um, it was a little easier because I'm just like, all right, you're just a dick, whatever. But yeah. in general, a, a lot of these people, I'm like, like we used to have such in depth conversations. Like, I know you people are smart guys. Like, I don't get it. Like, I don't, I don't understand why you're just like so. I mean, I don't, I, I don't, I normally try, I try not to just assume that that these people have. Uh, you know, been hiding real, actual, real racist tendencies or anti-Semitic tendencies or whatever that I just wasn't aware of this whole time. But when I think about it, it's like that's the only conclusion I can come to. Sometimes it's because, like, how how else could somebody that I know to be intelligent enough to think things out normally? Because we've we've worked through, through other ideas for years now together over like different things and changed like you know a lot of you know a lot of these people I've come through this movement with together we are and all of our ideas have kind of evolved um but not you know shifting a little bit but you know the main idea is like the, the main core our philosophy we we all kind of clung together on that we were like a little group and like to see these people now like be so blatantly blind like just so so blind to their to the to these uh you know to these contradictions that they're just it's like dude what happened I can't. I can't think anything else. Then, otherwise, you were just a horrible racist this whole time, and I just didn't realize it. Like, then shame on me. I guess I don't know. No, I, um, I think it, it doesn't make of, any other sense. I think what it really boils down to is uh, something that that Matt Pritchard says, uh, which is which is spot on. Is that identity uh, identity politics is where the mind goes to die, and I've seen a lot of brilliant people. A lot of brilliant people start to go like, okay, well, let's talk about race and IQ, which whatever you want to do that, that's fine. Um, but once they start going down that rabbit, then they start talking about it all the time. And then it, it, it always kind of leads to these weird implications that don't make a whole lot of sense. Even if you would accept the science that, you know, that they're, that they're pur- purporting, even if you accept that's true. Okay. Like, okay. Black people have a lower IQ and they have a high propensity of crime. Okay. But, but the variable is still on the individual. Like that's where the wild uh, variation comes from. Like you can have two black people who, who vary f- so far differently than statistical averages between races. So you can't really judge people based on race. It's a very wonky middleman. So what are you going to do? Like you're going to ban people who look a certain way? Like what about like there's even like Hispanics that look like white people and there's Hispanics that look like black people. How are you going to judge whether or not like those people can be in a Hispanic group <laughs> because they, they look like black people even though they're – Man, listen, man. Racially mandatory completely 20, different, or genetically mandatory, completely different. Mandatory twenty-three me test, man. Okay. For pragmatism, for pragmatism. <laughs> for pra- come on, yeah. come on, bro. Get on my level. Yeah, and it just it, people just put their minds aside because they get into they get in this poly- which I understand. Like SJWs are are very toxic, and they're like in infected in almost every kind of facet in society right now. Uh, and it looks as though they're starting to kind of lose a lot of power. Thank God. You know, there's still more work to be done too, and it's it's when you look around and that's all like that's the problem that you see. It's it's kind of easy to 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 start going like, well, I'm gonna I'm gonna work with people who are fighting this, and a lot of the people who are fighting this are very unsavory, even more just if as much if not more unsavory than the SJWs. You know, white nationalists, 
uh, nationalist socialists, all, all these people. They're they're not good people. You know, they're they are SJWs. They're just you know they just don't the, have a the, guilty the, conscience. That's all. The, <laughs> that's, the, 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 the CJWs on the other side. Yeah, that's, yeah, what, yeah. that's what I that's what I call them. Yeah, uh, um, I, I watched this interesting debate, and I'm not I'm not the biggest fan of. Um, Sargon of Akkad, even though I kind of like what he what he does, I just don't like the format that he does it in, like the really extra long format where he's responding to a three minute video and it takes him five hours. I'm not a big fan of that, <laughs> but he did this debate and he was with some some guy who was arguing for social justice and he um, and basically what he got him to do was admit that he was a uh, you know a white nationalist with a guilty conscience. <laughs> That's pretty much what it boiled <laughs> down to. So it's like if you're going to fight people who are white nationalists with a guilty conscience, you don't do it with white nationalism. It doesn't make a whole lot of sense, you know. You're basically just saying like, "Oh, well, our side is better." <laughs> it's like, no, it's, your te- it's, both of your teams suck. <laughs> we just kids, to, kids, yeah, you're both you're both just <laughs> awful. <laughs> exactly, exactly. It's the way I look oh. at it. I judge people based on how they behave. Like, I like. If your skin color makes you more, per, you know, makes you makes you more likely to be of one thing more than another, it's like okay, well that's great, but what about you? Like just because you have a higher propensity for that doesn't mean that you are that, right? Well, yeah, but 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 that also goes back to you know that's one of those things that I think at least falls under what, what, what the view that I have of you know theory theory versus reality because okay you have these statistics when you're talking about this type of stuff whether you're talking about you know the iq like you said iq or you know or, or crime statistics or any of this stuff okay you have these numbers that's great and then you're you're making this theory off of it but in reality not only is, is like the individual thing um but you have to look at the reality of why this is and it's not because uh, I, I don't think it's necessarily because, you know, black people are inherently dumber than white people. Um, you know, you just look at history. Historically, they were held back a lot more. And by who? Who the, the one entity who's supposed to be all of our all of our common enemy, the state. Yeah. <laughs> you know, so like. If you put these people, because I mean, this has been proven, you know, even in, you know, you look at what goes on in, uh, it's, I think it's in India, and I mean, it's, it's going to kill me because I'm going to, I'm going to forget the name of the book right now, but it's like the Growing Tree or something like that. Um, but it's basically the the story of the uh, these people that have gone over to India and started like these ridiculously cheap um, schooling programs uh, for like the poor, you know, the poor people, you know, that basically that have no. Uh, you know, there's no, there's nothing there that yeah. it, where it's so poor in India, and these kids are like thriving and stuff, um, and it's just and, the, and now they've taken this model and like use it in other places in the world, and it just it's a matter of you know giving anybody any child the opportunity, um, you know, and uh, they, they you know they end up improving, um, but in a lot of these cases, even here in good old, the good old USSA, there is no room for improvement because the the public the public schools are horrible. The public schools in certain sectors where you know these people that they want you know that the uh, the anti semites and the racists all want to all want to point at and just, or you know so I'm sorry I'm sorry uh, I should use air quotes because you know they're not really they just you know we just think they are apparently scare quotes um, yeah <laughs> scare quotes there you go um, you know where all the, you know, in the ghettos and stuff like that, they're even worse. So, you know, if you actually give people the opportunity and there's not uh, this, you know, I, you know, I'm one of those people I've been for the longest time. I, I've been kind of like the, the panarchist where I'm kind of just like, hey, man, I mean, that's why I was always okay when people talked about their covenant communities. And if they, even if they wanted to be, even if they wanted them to be all white, I'm like, yeah, man, go for it. That's yeah. great. Let's have a bunch of these things all over the place. And then we could actually have, what the the United States was supposed to be originally, you know, the laboratories where every different little com, you know state or yeah. in this, this case community or whatever gets to try out their own little thing and see how we, it works. Yeah, we can watch. Like, I'm all for his, that. We can watch the zeitgeisters die off. <laughs> well, yeah, you know that's why I said <laughs> same same thing. I said the same thing about Amprims for a long time when people were like always down in the Amprims. I'm like, dude, man, I say we chip in, get them like a couple of, like a thousand acres. And just throw them out there, and we'll check back on them in a year. And I guarantee, by the end of year two, there may be you know most of them will be dead. Yeah, dying of <laughs> dysentery because they they figured out that you just can't drink the water out of the stream. 
You'll shit water. Yeah. <laughs> and then you have to drink more water because you're dehydrated, et cetera, until you're, you die of dehydration. Yeah, like yeah. those heart, like like those like those poor kids are dying of of, of cholera, de- yeah, and, de- and malaria, dehydration. and yeah, polio, out, out in Yemen, and, and whooping cough, and you know the common cold, <laughs> like all these little things that you know that we just kind of take take for granted. Uh, yeah, yeah. But so I was always for you know I was always for those ideas. So I'm like, yeah, but they don't like. They claim, oh, we just don't want them, but like they want to kick everybody that they that they don't think uh, fits their community out of an entire country worth of you know country's worth of land, <laughs> and it's like, no, nah, man, it just don't work like that. Because and and I know I I'm pretty sure, like, like I said, I I keep coming back to the conclusion that more and more that more of these guys are actually racist, <laughs> or at least they've turned racist because of this stuff, uh, because it's like they they fear competition. That's what it is. They're trying to drive as many people out of like a you know a huge land mass as they can because because I, I think they're afraid of the uh, and when I've challenged a lot of a lot of them on this, they of course scoff at it, but they don't actually come back with a counter argument to me, uh, yeah. you know, or or, or defense of it because it just seems to me that they're afraid of having because like, yeah, let's get it up and running. Let's see who actually survives. I'm pretty sure. I don't know. You know, I mean, I might be crazy, but I'm pretty sure that any community that chooses to be all white, all black, whatever, and take a hard line stance against people that are not of whatever color or gender, whatever it is they've chosen to have their particular community all about. I'm pretty sure that the general population, just like, you know, society, whatever, you know, we, you know, whatever, use all those words as a whole, not going to want to do business with you. Yeah. You know, that's just the way people are wired these days. So, you know, I'm all for you getting the opportunity to do it. And, if you know, if, if a good business opportunity presents itself between you and I, I may still do it. But on the whole, I'm not going to want to hang out with you. And I'm probably not going to give you too much business in general, um, you know, unless it's something that's like, you know, a steal. <laughs> um, and most other people aren't either. Just just for the simple fact of who you are and not what you have to offer at all. It's not even going to be a consideration. Yeah, though I think if if any like neighboring kind of ANCAP laboratory community would would scare me, um, like some of the ANCOMs definitely would because a, there's a lot of like ANCOMs that are like no any any kind of capitalist society even if it's even if it's not directly harming us is still kind of harming us because it's exploiting those people and those people need to be liberated by by violence <laughs> and so does the quote unquote property. Um, but th- th- that doesn't really bother me as much as, as like polygamous groups. I think polygamous groups may be like the biggest threat. And the reason why. Really? Yeah. And, and it sounds kind of weird because you're like, really? Just just guys who wanted multiple wives? Yeah. Because um, there's there's a lot of reasons for it. Us- usually groups that have or usually societies that have a lot of um, disposable males go to war a lot. <laughs> for resources uh, because they have extra men and not enough women because women birth rates are like what 51 49 or something like that uh, which is almost half and half um, after a while you can't have 12 wives <laughs> if if you know if there's 11 other males who are looking for 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 a family and so what ends up happening is either a they'll go and just start offing kids kind of like the child one you know, the one child policy in China, which is rare, which usually ends up happening, especially if they have any kind of reins of power, especially if there's no state, is they end up starting wars <laughs> uh, just just to send the boys off to die in wars mm. and to cut and and to gain resources and more women. So I think that's that's probably one of the one. I'm sure there's probably more concerns if I sat down and thought thought about it, but that's that was the one that was kind of getting me to go like, there has to be some sort of protection, but not from a state, <laughs> just just from these little well, well certain kind I, of it, communities that have like these weird things that lead to really nasty uh, externalities. All right, so if yeah. you want to have a polygamous society, then it has to be a monarchy. That just has to be the rule. Yeah, that has to be. <laughs> <laughs> that, that should hopefully quell that problem at least for a little while. But yeah, I get what you're saying. Well, and yeah, I mean, again, I, 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 even even in that hypothetical situation, I still, you know, I of course see you know potential problems with all sorts of groups. But like, I'm just more along the lines of, hey man, at least just let's get there and try it, and let's yeah. see, you know, because unfortunately, it, it can't be. I mean, it can it, it can get worse, I guess, domestically than it has been. But you know, <laughs> yeah. So there's one more thing uh, we should probably talk about. 
I'm the more I've been thinking about this, the more I've been disagreeing with Hoppe. Uh, and that is the idea that monarchy is better than uh, democracy. Hmm. Do you do you buy this argument that like even though he he, he would say both of them are bad? Um, yeah, no, yeah. I the first time I, I heard do that mean argument. State argu- I'm, by the way, I'm talking about state monarchy, not anarcho monarchists. Just just to be clear. Okay. Yes. Yeah. Yes. It's a very different um, thing. <laughs> Um, yeah, I, I, the, well, the, the first time I heard the argument, um, I kind of just ignored it. And then when I, then I heard it again, I was like, okay. And I, I thought about it for a little while and I, I kind of said, I kind of said, all right, that makes sense, I guess. And then I kind of left it at that. I've never really given it like a, 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 an incredible amount of thought. Yeah. Uh, I, I just, I guess I probably, because I already had that bias where I just ought, you know, I, I, for the longest time, I just, democracy is bad. Democracy is bad. Democracy is bad. Like that's kind of just been pounded in yeah. my head. And so, democracy like, is I, bad. I'm not defending democracy, by the way. Just, yeah. Oh, yeah. you know, I, I, I get that, but, uh, um, uh, but I have, but yes. I have to say that otherwise I'll get someone who comments like, I can't believe you like democracy. Like, I'm, <laughs> no, well, they're going to comment. They're going to comment that anyway. Okay. Um, <laughs> I try. I, I really try I, <laughs> to make myself I, unambiguous, but it just I, seems to I, just fall through the cracks. Listen, I've I've said it before, and I'll say it again. If more people, if if there was more people spending time at, at building and erecting actual scarecrows rather than creating than rather than creating these figurative ones all over social media <laughs> and on comment sections, people would be a lot fucking wealthier, man. Seriously, just stop it. Um, but yeah, so I yeah, so what 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 why are you thinking this is uh why are you disagreeing with this argument now? I'm I'm interested to hear this because like I said, I've never put much thought into the original one. I just kind of thought, ah, it kind of makes sense. All right, I, I could buy it for a dollar type thing. But yeah, so what I, do you I, got? I, I was I was I was believing it too, and then I, the more I kind of thought about it, I was like, you know, like we can always kind of think of the ones like you know the, some of the ones in Europe. Um, you know, as being like, okay, but then there was a lot of them that were in Europe, but though I think the one real monarchy that really exists today, like true monarchy, where a family owns the state, it's not like, you know, Britain where they're kind of like, yeah, they own the state, wink, wink, but really, yeah, yeah. but really they're just figureheads. Um, the only one that I can think of right now is by far like the worst human rights disaster in, in, in world history. And that's North Korea. And there's been lots of kind of like dictatorships that have taken over, which you would have to say is a almost a form of monarchy, almost like a very close form of monarchy where yes. one family, usually held by a monarch or a, a, a patriarch or a monarch, uh, is is in control of the whole entire country, and they own the people, and it's a very feudal system, and it's it's never been good, ever been good. And the the kind of the arguments that go against it is like, well, democracy is even worse because politicians have to run and they're only accountable for a very small window. So they pass the buck to the next politician. But the problem is, is a lot of these politicians belong to parties and they're very loyal to their party. And they know that if they do things that will screw up their chances for, for their party in the future, a lot of the stuff that they want and they advocate are on the chopping block. Take, for example, Obamacare. <laughs> like, Obama really wanted Hillary to win the presidency and wanted to take back the House and the Senate because he knew that if he lost the presidency, Obamacare, the only th- part of his legacy that remains, would be gone. And it's almost it looks like it's going to be leaving soon. Like, I thought it wasn't, but it looks like it's starting to kind of dissipate a little bit. So... Uh, so long as parties exist, pe- parties are going to be a little bit more loyal um, to their their goals. Even if their predecessors were wrong, they'll try to improve, you know, fix problems in it as well. So, yeah, I mean, there's still lots of problems. I'm not saying that, like, just because, a, you know, a president, like, has some loyalty to their party that, you know, they once they leave office, they don't care. I mean, there's still that little element, but I think it's overstated in Hoppe's argument. Okay. I uh, I can see that. <laughs> well, see, I was thinking, like I said, I I, did, I had never given it much thought, but as soon as you started like mentioning that, like I started to think, like, yeah, sure, the the Korea example is, a, I, I think, is a good one. The North Korea example is a good yeah. one, but I, I think that I think the other thing that I guess if I think about it a little more, that all that does seem to get left out of that argument is, you know, again, historically speaking, even when you have these things, you know, even if you've had a, a monarch that was you know, 
benevolent, I guess, to to whatever extent they could more, possibly maybe be. Maybe more benevolent. <laughs> yeah, well, you know what? That's what I meant, yeah. to, to whatever extent that's possible. Yeah. <laughs> um, it, 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 seems to, it always seems to fade from generation to mm-hmm. generation, that benevolence. Um, and you turn, you know, what you may have a, a peaceful society where people are living under a, essentially a feudal system, but they're not feeling the oppression of it to like, you know, the next sun and then the sun after that. By the time the sun after that comes around, like everybody's miserable as fuck. Yeah. You know, because it's because he because they have let it deteriorate and they have let things slip because they, uh, you know, they don't have a just wife like, with a family. They have a harem and they don't care about passing stuff on to their kids. They're only worried about the now. Gimme, gimme, gimme. Well, well, exactly. I'm, st- I'm starving. Ha ha. And he's like eating a giant turkey leg. Ha ha. Oh, get out of here. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. So that, 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 I mean, again, again, this, this is where I think a lot of these, a lot of these ideas, uh, people, they get so attached to them, you know, it's as spooky as that is, uh, they, uh, they get, a, a they get attached. Yeah. And they get attached to it and they, and they, and they, 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 they detach themselves from reality. They, they get stuck on this theory that, yeah, makes a lot of sense in theory, but yeah, let's look at the historical examples and, and look, and look at modern ones. Yeah. And, yeah, and current ones. And let's also look at the current makeup of, you know, what, what we can generally agree human nature constitutes, you know, to whatever extent that does, you know, that people tend to do certain things, you know, tribalism still a very big thing, you know, kind of hard to avoid that uh, and stuff like that, you know, people, they leave all of this stuff out of the equation. <laughs> yeah. It's kind of important. So yeah, I, I can see that. Yeah. Like I said, I, I've never given it much thought, but I can, uh, yeah, I, I don't know. I don't know if democracy is necessarily any better. Yeah, um, I'm not saying that like democracy would be better or that monarchy would be worse or vice versa. It's just more like I think they're both terrible. <laughs> and you have to you just can't say like, oh, look at all the bad things of democracy and look at the things that, you know, the good the finer aspects of the monarchy. I think you have to be fair on both and go like well, there's some benefits to democracy as well, and there's a lot of problems with monarchy. We just can't just look at them and go like, well, you know, let's tip the scales a little bit. It's an interesting thought experiment for sure. I'm not going to deny that. It's an interesting kind of debate, but. Oh, sure. Yeah. But yeah, to, 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 to choose one side definitively, I guess, is rather short-sighted. Yeah. It would seem. Okay, I agree. You, you've, you've, you've won me over. <laughs> <Yay>. <laughs> <laughs> All right, so you got anything else for me or Nah, man, I don't no. think. Well, I, like well, I mean other than like I mentioned earlier, uh that I'm trying to say on, da- on state Gabe's good side a little bit cuz uh, he's trying to help me with mining. I'm trying to get to the mining game cuz uh, you know, I really don't really don't really don't have any uh, you know, money at the moment other than what's in my crypto. Yeah. <laughs> so so I'm going to going to try to start mining Monero. Got yeah, that. please donate to uh to to Jeremy for sure. Yeah, please yeah. Donate. Hashtag please donate. I think uh, I have your, I have your stuff still listed in in, in the donate page, don't I? The I don't Alberts. even know. Maybe, maybe. Well, we got the we got the new we got the new page up. Unfortunately, our donate page on solpodcast.org uh, goes directly to our Patreon, which is fine if people want to donate to our Patreon. I always accept that. Um, but my my buddy Paul Gordon, who was so nice to put the site up for not. me. I don't have your the, stuff. You need to send me your stuff. I'll put it in the hashtag please donate section of the lowwords.com. Yeah. Yeah, that'll be easier because you have to you actually have to go to like our, our YouTube channel where on on the show notes where all of our stuff is listed. And, and then it, then it's all the places where you can well, donate to just, us. Just just yeah, just copy that and send it to me and I'll I'll put it all in I'll there. I'll do that. Yeah, I have everybody's name and all their stuff. Except for Bab. Bab didn't want to be give me his stuff. Luke David Lukehart didn't give me his stuff yet. Still lagging on it. And uh yeah. So yeah, oh, if you, oh, if you oh, like oh, this oh. episode and you want to donate to the Lowbirds, hold out and, and and go to the Seeds of Liberty <laughs> next episode. I, give me that cash money. <laughs> so yeah, right hey, now you hey. need it more than I do. Or hey, at least, at least use my Amazon link. The bastards finally let me. Let, oh, let they it did. Start to, let let it start. Yeah, I finally got some purchases that worked. Oh, is we should do that since you're back on now. So go ahead, go ahead, say tell your story. I'll I'll, I'll go ahead. Uh, oh, with Amazon. Yeah. <laughs> oh, uh, yeah. They, I, I signed up for an affiliate link for the Seeds of Liberty. We used to have one way back in the day, but Dave shut it down, and we never did anything with it. So I started a new one and just attached it to my email. And uh, we, I put it, you know, I put the link out there, and a bunch of people tried to start using it, and 
I got denied like every like there was like at one point I think like 30 items had been ordered under my link and not a single one of them uh, was approved for me to get credit for because somehow some way Amazon found that I had a link to all of these people um, like a couple of them were orders from my end because I accidentally made an Amazon order forgetting cheater. that I had already cheated you know, like but but the, the systems <laughs> the systems designed to catch that so I, I'm like oh that's fine like you know because it even says the reason for your denial may be that you accidentally ordered something like you may have clicked on your own link not you know and not realizing it, it actually says that in their in their in their error message um so I was like I understand that but I knew for a fact a bunch of other people that had ordered in, including uh, Michael Dean <laughs> and uh yeah, they denied everything. And every time I asked, they basically just kept saying that somehow they couldn't tell me how because of their proprietary software that they used to figure this stuff out. Uh, but somehow they knew that I had a connection to them. So they couldn't, uh, you know, they're tomorrow. really trying to, cl yeah. Um, but finally, I, I my, some of my clients start, you know, some of my former clients, well, ones that are, I'm still helping out uh, with my uh, with my company, uh, they uh, they started using, and apparently those have gone through all the minimal purchases, of course, you know, <laughs> like, um, but it seems to be working now. So yeah, yeah. Uh, so um, uh, yeah, like, and 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 for for you to lose money on Michael Dean's uh, purchases, that sucks because the dude lives off Amazon. He was like, I'm going to use your affiliate link for a month. I was like, okay, he'll probably get to buy a book here and you know, oxygen tube there. And that's about it. And no, it was like thousands of dollars worth of stuff. He's like, I know cereal and band-aids and audio equipment. It's like, Jesus Christ, <laughs> you live off well, this he's, thing. If they had Amazon, the if he had the Amazon grocery thing, it would have been game over. <laughs> I would have been a millionaire, but go ahead. Yeah. Well, well that, yeah. And unfortunately they, I think they, because they blocked me from you, Using, from him from using mine they also blocked me from using his uh. um because i because I, I him and i because he'd been he'd been the one bugging me to set one up for the longest time because i didn't have one he's like you should really set one up i'll use it you should set it up i'll use it because i and i'm the same way like if i probably if i should probably use somebody else's i can't even remember who i'm using at the moment but i should probably switch it up um because i try to do that every couple of months and just switch it around but because i order constantly you probably from should amazon use mine you probably should not use mine <laughs> Because you'll, you'll 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 give me your your Amazon aids. I don't want it. <laughs> exactly. That's the other thing I'm afraid of. Like I want to help people out, but I'm like I may destroy you. I'm yeah. sorry. I didn't mean it. <laughs> yeah, don't buy from me. But if you do buy from the shops dot com, occasionally uh, I'll read what you buy. And I bought and there was a whole bunch of cool shit. Like a whole bunch of cool shit. Like last time I think where we had like trash bags. And some like some gloves. Yeah. It was kind of boring. And I was like, guys, come on, buy cooler shit. Like, even if it's something that you know, even if it costs less money, just get something that's like more interesting. And they did not disappoint. So this is actually going back all the way to what September twenty six. <laughs> this was the last time we did this. So wow. Uh, so there's some LED multicolor uh, indoor outdoor lights for Christmas. Okay, that's nice Christmas stuff. Yeah, yeah, yeah whatever. Uh, and then we have. A JK9 Pockets Class 2 High Visibility Zipper. Uh, whatever. What is this? What? Okay. I have it's a, it looks like a Kevlar vest, but it's like one of those things that like you see like, you know, the people going and getting your shopping carts in the middle of the night. You know, they have the little oh. reflective stripes on it, little see-through vest. It kind of looks like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay. But it's, it's not green. It's kind of a neat, kind of a gray color, kind of a bluish mm. gray. It's neat. Okay, this is where it gets interesting. So we have a Behringer Xenix one uh, one thousand one zero zero two B mixer, and it's it's very nice. I think I know who bought this though. <laughs> I'm not going to say who, but by the way, I I don't know who bought this stuff. So if you buy this, if you did buy like a large like butt plug or something, I, I'm not going to know it was you. I'm just going to know one zero zero two B. You said. Behringer Xenix 1002B. Uh, uh, it's a lower. Uh, it's a lower model than mine. Uh, it's a higher model than Garbage. mine. <laughs> it's pretty nice, but it is Behringer. Behringer is kind of like the cheaper brand. Uh, yeah, I know. That's what I have. I have a Behringer. I have a Behringer. Yeah, <laughs> I was, they're, they're I was good. Around. They're good, but you know, if you're going to get something super nice, uh, you're probably going to pay a little bit more for like what, maybe a Yamaha or something. Yeah, I couldn't afford that. <laughs> that's why I ended up with a Behringer. Yeah. Dynex nit Nitrile gl Exam Gloves, which is the kind of gloves I use at work. But he got the black one, extra large, 100 count. Nine bucks for a box of these gloves, by the way. 
Nine bucks for a yeah. hundred gloves? That sounds like expensive. Yeah, I go through like a third of a box a night. <laughs> like no big deal. Well, I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure. I'm sure that your place of your place of work gets your place of employment gets them in bulk. But yeah, but that's yeah, still. Yeah, but even yeah. like a single box, that is like it. That's insane. Yeah. And then we have. Uh, it looks like someone was buying more audio stuff. Uh, MetaBridge 3.5 millimeter male to male RCA adapter. So it kind of goes through like a half. What is it? Eight eighth of an inch adapter to RCA adapter. So it's probably for the uh, for the mixer. Very nice. And then. Of course, the Audio Technica AT 2005 USB Cardioid Dynamic USB XLR yeah, microphone. Yeah, baby, that's what I use. Me too. The dopest. Screw that. Screw that. Twenty one hundred. The silver one. All those pretty boys have, man. <laughs> I like the the 2005. Nice big black mic up in my grill. That's yeah. what I'm talking about, baby. Do you, do you think it's worth <laughs> the extra what five to thirty dollars, depending on what day it is? Uh, difference. No, absolutely no. not. <laughs> There's no difference. Just get whatever. I no, think- they're but no. Honestly, they're I've 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 tested them both out. They're 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 the same thing. I just I bought the black one because when I originally bought it, it was like it was thirty dollars cheaper than the silver yeah. one at the time. And uh, you know, I actually got it. God, I think I got it on a crazy sale when it was back down at like fifty five bucks or something. Yep. If you have good mic, to, uh, you probably don't even need that great <laughs> of mic mic technique. Um, but if you have good mic technique, you don't you don't need to shell out five hundred dollars for one of those R O R twenties. And so yeah, so the 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 AT two thousand five USB is pretty much the same as the twenty one hundred USB AT twenty one hundred. Yeah, USB. They're, they're they're exactly they're exactly the same microphone, yeah. just one's one silver, one's black. Yeah, check to see which one is cheaper and buy the cheaper one. I think the twenty one hundred Michael says you should open it up and take out a piece of foam. Um, you can go to Creamy Radio Audio and they'll tell you how to do that. Um, but use my yeah, link, so, not, not his, because I want money. I like Amazon. Yes, but <laughs> well, if, it, yes, and if, if you do want to use my my link, uh, conveniently enough, my link currently is uh, as 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 is as a, a link for uh, the that particular mic. So it's a it's a Bitly link at SOL Podcast uh, Mike. Yeah, but then I won't mention it. You'll have to start doing something on your show where you're like, oh, let's start talking about sh- shit people bought. <laughs> but of course you could probably do it in the guise of hey uh this is what i didn't get paid for asshole <laughs> <laughs> yeah i should check to see if they give me the list of the rejected ones yeah look at it look at look what you stole from me uh, i've already i've this is why this is why i have no sponsorship because i curse out everybody i've cursed out i've cursed out amazon repeatedly on my show we've had actually entire episodes dedicated to me bashing amazon um the jack's wallet i've ripped apart on multiple episodes recently <laughs> Yep. Okay, so t- the TCPIP guide, a comprehensive il- illustrated internet protocols reference, first edition, Kindle edition, sixty dollars for a textbook, an internet. Whoa! Tech, wait, yeah, wait, an wait, wait, wait! Sixty dollars for for an ebook? Yeah, but it looks like wow. it's, it's a textbook. So if you're going to college, but you kind of s- have to buy it. I, well, okay. Yeah, I guess. Wow, man, that's. That's some BS. <laughs> like, the co- I'm sorry. The co- to interrupt for a second here, the co- the college book racket is such is such a racket in the first place because yeah. they have these you know academic books. I mean, I've heard I've heard even like just you know, you know, I've heard different economists and stuff talk about this. You know, when they they write a, a particular book and the people are mad that they have to chart like it's, they're charging like a hundred dollars for it. They're like it's like it's out of our control. Like that's actually the way it's set up. Like if you want to get books published in a certain way. Um, in an academic field of any way, they're like automatically going to charge you. That's like a you know ninety dollar minimum or some bullshit. Yeah, and you can't so, buy the pre. You can't buy a used one because there's been a new edition that came out this year, and you have to have the new edition. You can't have yep. the previous edition. So the used textbooks, you just might as well just throw it in the trash because it's not even worth the dollar they're going to give to you and all the hassle that you have to go through in order to sell it back to the bookstore. It's a ha- nightmare. Yep, and I think there's only like one or two uh, uh, publishing companies that handle the entire uh, book, or whatever it is. It, so it's all that, yeah. So, but yeah, but to, so so this is this is how they're still gouging their students. Oh, you want to use your Kindle? Fine, <laughs> sixty bucks instead. That, that, oh, that like, I don't care how big the fucking textbook. Sixty bucks for a goddamn ebook is in fucking sane. I mean, yeah, like the the book that I wanted to buy, uh, which I did buy. <clears throat> Reclaiming history is like almost four thousand pages, 
and to buy a physical copy of the book is 60 bucks. The Kindle wow. version is still 25 bucks. So that's still pretty high, but I mean, it's not 60. <laughs> that's still a lot. Yeah. That's it, still a lot. I don't know. I don't think I don't think I was I don't know. I mean, I've never even paid. I don't think I've ever paid more. It's half. Is, it's not even half as thick. <laughs> it's the book that I bought, that I was uh, that I bought. <clears throat> yeah, that I bought, borrowed from the public library, whatever. I don't okay. think I've ever paid more than more than ten bucks for an ebook. <laughs> yeah, I don't know. whatever. Um, so we have a Woods Agricultural Extension Cord. It just looks like a extension cord, but it has three little plugs at the end. Uh, Amazon Basics AAA batteries, alkaline batteries, 20 pack. Packaging may vary. Uh, a Vernado Vortex heater with automatic climate control. Oh, it looks like a little kind of space heater. Spa- is a space heater? Yeah. Oh, those are nice. I like those. Yeah. I got rid of my space heater. <laughs> uh, and then, of course, someone, someone, I got a smart person in my audience. Someone bought a YubiKey 4. Which uh, it helps you kind of secure all of your all of your passwords and stuff on the internet. Two factor authentication. Uh, yep, yeah, definitely. You should definitely get a YubiKey. I really need to get a YubiKey. I just never really just had forty bucks, so I could be like, yeah, I'll get rid of it for YubiKey. I'll just memorize all my passwords and shit. <laughs> yeah, I'm I'm the same way. I've no. I've said I should. I don't. You know, I have I have passwords written down. I have my crypto stuff written down. And <laughs> I'm like, yeah, I'll get around to putting all this stuff somewhere safe someday. Yeah. But it still doesn't protect you against uh, ripper hose hackers. That's the problem. This, they, need to, they need to invent something for that. <laughs> <laughs> I guess a gun, it would be it, right? Uh, yeah, a Minger go. power supply. Uh, Transformer. Uh, oh, it's, it's for the lights. It's for the, for the LED lights. L, L, yeah, for the Christmas lights. Okay. Candy corn, one pound. So apparently my audience isn't that smart. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I like candy corn. I don't know hey, why. Apparently, my co-hosts aren't that smart either. <laughs> <laughs> it's just pure sugar, whatever, man. <laughs> it's pretty much all it is. It's just sugar. Every time they're exactly. around, I can't stop eating it. But as I'm eating it, I'm just like, these aren't good. Why? No. And the pumpkin ones are worse. Yeah, I'm not. I I like those as a kid, and then I went to have one as an adult, and I was like, oh god, I used to like these things. This is horrid. Um, <laughs> Luckily, I don't have it. Like my my kids, my kids kind of like it, but we don't really keep it around. So even on Halloween, we didn't have to deal with candy corn that much. So that was good. Yeah, the Monster right. Hunter Files. Someone bought an audiobook on Audible. Uh, it's a story for well over a century. Monster Hunters International has kept the world safe from supernatural threats, and small and large, and in some cases, very, very, very large. Um, so they fight monsters. Nice. Monsters, yeah. And last but not least, uh, looks like a set of USB cables. C2G cables to go. USB, A, B, active. I don't know what this is. Connect your USB device for an incredible 25 feet away. Oh, uh, sounds like it's for the mic. Maybe No, that seems like pretty far to be away from the... Mixer. I was gonna say for the microphone, but maybe, actually, maybe maybe to plug maybe to uh, plug to the you know computer what? so the computer can sit far away. Yeah, it looks like it's one of those hardware. You know how like printers have like a weird version of USB. It kind of looks like that. Uh, that you okay. would expect oh yeah, from maybe a maybe a mixer. I think my mixer has the same USB, but I don't actually, use USB anymore. I have I have it hooked up to my Zoom. Oh no, actually, that doesn't make sense because I'm using USB on my mixer. So yeah, yeah. If you, if you want to keep those separate, I don't know if you have a noisy computer and you need to keep it away from your. You, you gotta you gotta <laughs> keep them equal but separate, right? <laughs> equal but separate. Yes, yes, exactly. Bringing it back. <laughs> <laughs> Stay tuned next week where we defend border walls. <laughs> <laughs> so you want to plug your uh, your website one more time and uh, we'll, we'll wrap oh, things yeah. up here. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. So uh, so oh, most of my stuff can be found at solpodcast.org. Um, or, you know, the freedom fiends.com is where I do everything else. Yep. So, and here, <laughs> yep. you know, I think we're probably the only podcast that really talks about shit that people bought through our Amazon link. Um, I've never, I've never heard anybody doing least, that before. At, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah, I haven't heard anybody do that before. And I can only imagine like it couldn't possibly be a good show unless there was like some, 
you know, it'd be some nice, probably, cute doctor or something like that. You know, kind of saving the show from the a terrible oh, so, host. Yeah. So like, so, so like a nerdy, so like some nerdy tech show. Otherwise, that's really kind of boring. Yeah. Kind of thing. Yeah, yeah. Without yeah. without that doc, without, without that doctor, doctor. It would just been like, yeah. just been been terrible. I mean, I, I can only imagine. You know. You know, someone who legitimately thinks the Star Wars prequels were good. I mean, that kind of bad. Uh, wow, anyway. that's that's pretty bad, yeah, man. I don't know. <laughs> All right, man. <laughs> I'll talk to you later. Thanks for doing the show. Worms. Worms.